as soon as the Proud Boys were mentioned, I just went, what are you doing, you idiot? You've now taken this like, I'm talking about Chris Wallace, right? You've now taken this sort of niche party. I don't even know what, what the hell they are. They're like a sort of newer the vigilante group. group. They are right. a terrorist group. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and now you've now given them international press coverage, mm -hmm. right? You've, yeah. Now you've validated them, because I didn't know who the hell they were before. There's always, you know, there's, it's, for me, it's just iterations of the same phenomenon, right? It's like, like the QAnon or the alt-right and Richard Spencer and now Proud Boys. Like if you're just like giving a name to sort of different subsets of the, of the same sort of hateful ideology, but now you validated them. So now I bet you increased their membership by times 10. But also too, like they have been gaining, uh, uh, you know, uh, viewership by through people like Joe Rogan, who on his podcast had Gavin McInnes talking about the Proud Boys. Thank you very much. And Joe Rogan is somebody who like, he is somebody who's like sitting right in the middle. He's not right, he's not, he's not Republican, he's not Democrat. However, he is giving voice to people who are offensive. And some of the Spotify employees don't like it and to be honest like you know my attitude to those uh, spotify employees is dude suck it up that's like he's making the biggest amount of money spend the biggest amount of money on him let he's going to have to do his stuff but what but is that fair jake like do you think that that's a fair statement wow okay so i believe in free speech absolutely but i think when we give speech and, or sorry, we give highlight to those people who are spewing hate, um, that's dangerous. I mean, that's my line is that I believe in free speech. I believe, I mean, you have a right to say what you wanna say. I get to say what I wanna say. But when we start to give platform to people speaking hate against other people, that's where I draw the line uh, as far as I think that it becomes hate speech and it becomes dangerous for people. Yeah, but here's the issue, here's and, the issue, right? Yeah. Who defines the hate because it's funny sort of inculcating myself into, into the right mm -hmm. in the last month, to, really just to get that perspective. And then just to see like, what is the difference between the left and the right, okay? And the right will, will call mainstream liberal ideas hate speech, yeah. right? Like every BLM protest is, is, a, is an example of a terrorist organization according to the right. So, and, and yet, if, and if you look at the sort of demographics of the media consumption, Fox News and MSNBC are, are like neck and neck. Like both, like, it's not like, it's not, the right is not like a niche, tiny little cable channel, right? It, it's, it's like, you have a bifurcated nation that's completely divided, consuming this media that, that says the exact opposite message from each other the whole time. Well, you know what? I was going to ask Todd about this because both you and I, we write stuff and we produce things that get out there into the, to, into the public. And we uh, feel very strongly, of course, about, well, I don't know what you feel about free speech. Maybe you hate it. But um, I do want the latitude to be able to say things that people don't like. However, uh, like, what do you think about, like, the, 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 the way people at Spotify feel about uh, Joe Rogan? Like, what, what's there, there is a there is a huge difference because uh, first of all, Jake, I completely agree with you. Like the you know, yes, you're entitled to free speech, but that uh, ability to say free speech doesn't allow you to yell fire in a crowded theater. Yeah. Right. Um, as soon as other people are going to be impacted um, horribly or violently uh, to what you are actually saying is wrong. I also going to look at the um, at the basis of fact. Uh, which is why I don't take a lot of credence in Fox News, because if you had a fact checker on that, they would five would die before the end of the hour, uh, just by the amount of throughput that they would have to validate. Um, uh, yeah, you. Uh, there, if, if we don't have free speech, we don't have a free press. If we don't have a free press, we don't have an informed uh, electorate. So uh, in creating and writing, yeah, uh, you have to be able to back up what you're saying. And that's why I'm always very careful. But whenever I am crafting jokes that may be considered controversial or, or tackle a subject that, that is, is, needs some delicate care, I try to put that into that so that I'm making sure that all of my bases are covered. Um, you should be able to make uh, jokes about anything uh, that is out there. But what is going to determine whether your joke is, is, is valid and, and right and also funny is 
knowing how much care you put into it to make sure that the coverage is there, the care is there, that people understand that, oh, I see what is going on here. And the more audacious you can make that, the more challenging that becomes. But that's the, uh, that's the risk and the reward. And I These are not that- jokes. These are not jokes they're making, though. They are calling out to their base. I have a, a comedian friend of mine who actually turned into a, a proud boy. And it shocked me the day that, you know, we, we were all gathered after a show and I went, oh, wow, is everything else dirty in the wash? Because he was wearing the, the gold lemaid uh, polo shirt. He goes, no, I'm a proud boy. And every one of us just spat beer like a, like a spit take. And uh, he's gone. 